Welcome to this week's show, Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, along with Nanette Bullabush as your co-host. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we want to talk about some important issues like taxes. Right, and we have our special guest, Kel Potter. And we have a tax specialist person here. Well, with political <laughs> specialist, someone who, a keen <laughs> observer of national and state Kel issues. Kel Potter, a former state senator who right. went through many state uh, uh, budgets uh, and uh, uh, knows and understands that you have to uh, pay the bills and uh, be fair. And we had a recent... Uh, bill that uh, passed the Congress. Passed that without any Democratic support or even a public hearing. Oh my. It just passed. So the it, Tax Reform Act, which some liberals have, have nicknamed the Donor Relief Act, <laughs> Donor Relief <laughs> Bill, because it helps the donors. But you tell us, in your words, why is this bill such a bad <coughs> thing for us? Well, when you look at the total package, which is going to add about a trillion and a half to the national deficit, of that money, about 83% of it goes to about 1% of the wealthy in this country. 1%. So when you're talking about uh, that amount of money being shifted, it's just going to, if nothing else, is going to exacerbate the disparity of wealth in this country. We, over the years, have allowed uh, giant corporations and individuals to amass extreme amount of money so that today, mm -hmm. I would say 75% of the wealth of this country is in 10% of the population. Mm -hmm. And that means 90% of the population owns the other 25%. That's us. That's us. And, yeah. and what I always and I, and I oftentimes get into heated arguments and they don't start out that way, but they do because mm -hmm. I hear people, sometimes very working class people, who say, well, so, let, so what? Let the wealthy keep their money. And I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, there's just so much money. You know, if everybody wanted to be a millionaire, the, 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 the National uh, Treasury would not say, all right, start up the press, we're going to print enough no, money no. so everybody can be a millionaire. It doesn't <clears throat> work that way. There's just so much money. Mm -hmm. and, and the only way that you can have a functioning democracy in, in a functioning capitalist society is by the distribution of this wealth in a more even manner. And so that's why you had, even in Eisenhower years and the Reagan years and the Bush years, you had tax rates on very wealthy people that were very, very high. It was, it was stated that somebody has to pay the bills, and the people who pay the bills are the people who've got the money. <laughs> people who don't have money can't pay the bills. Right. And, 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 and otherwise, also, you need to have people be able to pull themselves up by the bootstraps. Sure. I hear that all the time. Why, why don't people of color just do what I my family did? Pull, we, we were immigrants. We pulled ourselves up by the bootstraps. Well, you can't do it when there's, like I said, 90% of the people have 25% of the wealth, and they're working <coughs> for minimum wage. And the minimum wage at 750 has been there for decades. Right. So there's no way that they can survive. They can't even pay their rent on what they're making. And so multiple jobs and multiple people in the family are the only way these people can survive. So if you have a tax bill now that starts uh, actually raising the tax on some of these poorer people and just right. giving it to people who now have money in Swiss bank accounts and, and all over the world, um, laundering in that manner, or, or corporate coffers where they have so much money they don't even know what to do with it, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to solve the problem of, of equity, of wealth, of poverty, and all the other maladies that go along with uh, underfunding. So a tax bill is more than uh, the ads now running. Oh, I'm going to get two thousand dollars, and they got a cute little family saying, "Well, mm -hmm. we're going to we can buy grandma a new microwave oven or something." You know, very simplistic, misleading, and complete baloney uh, approach to this whole issue. And temporary. The corporate tax cuts are permanent. Yes. So Apple is going to get $47 billion in tax cuts over the next decade or so. We will get, I believe, if you are in, of middle income, somewhere between $46,000 and $80,000, we'll get something like $70 a month mm -hmm. this first year. So $800. Hey, we're doing great. Yeah. $800. Thank you, President Trump. But I, I want to urge people, please don't be fooled by this $800, because one, it's going to go away, whereas the other tax breaks are, continue. are, are continue. Mm -hmm. Two, other costs are going to go yeah. up, like yeah. health care. Things are going to hurt. So it's not, it's not a win situation. No. We're going to be hurt. No. But, but it's so easy to be fooled by that little extra money that's going to come fairly soon. And that's what concerns me. Well, there's also a fallacy here that 
uh, trickle-down economics works. Right. This is not the first time this nation has no. embarked upon this. It was done right in the beginning of Reagan's uh, first term. There was a fellow named Stockman, and he and Reagan uh, concocted a tax breaks that were, were supposed to give big tax breaks to the wealthy with the idea that they were going to create jobs. It didn't work. Shortly thereafter, Stockman left the uh, Reagan administration, and Ronald Reagan never said much about it later on. Matter of fact, I think there were some tax increases in his term after that in order to balance the budget. You don't give more money to the wealthy, expecting them to create an inordinate amount no. of jobs and, and raise, uh, raise wages. So you're not operating on a premise that's proven to work economically. <laughs> Another thing is that sometimes this trickle-down economics argument is used as a ruse for the real reason why this was given. And I would contend that the, the pure public policy analysis on, analysis on this, that this was a payback to people who now give big money to campaigns. Right. I believe Paul Ryan got $20 million right after that tax bill. He mm -hmm. got this $20 million donation. Yes. Yes. from. It was like, thank you, Mr. Wow. Yeah. That's just... We've had Supreme Court rulings, as you know, uh, Citizens United, that said corporations are people and people have uh, free speech and therefore corporations, through their free speech, can give as much money as they want. And so that's what we're having. We're seeing that, the, particularly in the conservative realm, there are very few people who are giving money in the tune of $25 or $100 or whatever. They're not even sought to, to, to contribute in that way. The people who are in office go after the Koch brothers right. or the Walton family or some other, uh, uh, the Mercer family, mm -hmm. who don't give $100. They give millions, millions of, dollars. of dollars. And so as a result, that's the constituency. <clears throat> so who do you keep happy when you put together a tax plan? The people who are going to benefit the most, who give you the most. Wow. It's a sick, sick yeah. system. <laughs> And, but it's unaware, I think, of many people. And that's why, like I said before, I run into and I get in arguments too often. My wife says I'm confrontational, but I says I, it, it ticks me off to have people who I know don't have much. They're trying to live in Social right. Security who say, let the rich people keep their money. What's wrong with this? Um, I said, well, you're screwing up the whole society is what you're doing. Um, there was a reason why in the 50s and the 60s and 70s, we had the growth of a middle class. Right. You don't have to go far back into the Depression <clears throat> years, the 20s and the 30s, where you found a disparity of wealth, and even worse, at the robber baron era of the mm -hmm. Rockefellers and the Mellons and all those folks, uh, where they built these big mansions on the Hudson River and the Carnegies and Mellons, and, and all these people were, made their money in steel and so on, and they kept it. And there were then tax laws that were written to put in the progressive income tax and the estate taxes and so on in order to fund government to make it, this whole thing a little more equitable. And we did achieve very good equity yes, in and the 50s, 60s, well. and 70s. And yes. now it has gone off the rails. Yes, it has. Money has taken the, uh, the high road rather than the low road. Well, money corrupts. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, money's a nice thing, but it can corrupt <clears throat> people and, and make them very selfish and not very benevolent in some cases. No, and, and when somebody gets uh, 50 or 100 or, or 1,000 dollars because of a tax break, they, they feel very good. Uh, and maybe For they don't while. care that, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, the very wealthy are going to get millions and millions and millions because they've got their 1,000 dollars once. Or and the deficit that has suddenly gotten yes, worse yeah. that the Republicans said they were <clears throat> so concerned about. Our, one of our senators, Senator Johnson, was so concerned about this in 2014. Mm -hmm. I spoke with a member of his staff just a couple of weeks ago. I went to Oshkosh, and, and, and they, they heard us. I appreciated that. But, but it was like, all of a sudden, this isn't important. We're going to make mm -hmm. that up. We're yeah. going to make that well, money the, up because the economy is well, going to be Well, you know how they're going to make that money up. Uh, the, the, the cynic in me says uh, there is uh, a grand thought here already, and what it's going to be is that the big ticket items like Social Security, Medicare right. and Medicaid mm -hmm. are going to be purported sure. as being the ones that have now contributed to this deficit. Not the tax plan, <coughs> but the big entitlement, right. as they call right. them. Yeah, that's and the what big you're going, one that they're going to go after. What you're going to see is an effort then to raise the uh, retirement age, uh, flatten out benefits, um, and, and what you're going to find out is that they're going to be elderly people who they're not going to get help when they need nursing home help, right. which is what Medicaid uh, tends but to do besides yes, helping yes. poor people. And you're going to see Medicare uh, maybe not paid. They won't pay 
seventy percent of cost as they do now. They'll pay sixty or fifty percent, and then people are going to have to find out where they're going to pay the rest of their bills. <laughs> and uh, they're going to have more and more doctors when they get paid fifty and sixty percent not take Medicare patients. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing is going to go go to hell, and that's how this is going to play out. <clears throat> and that's why again the people who think, well, let the rich people keep their money. You don't know what they're going to get. You're going to get bit in the behind on this yes, one. And, and I can just see Paul Ryan and others saying, we can't afford these programs. <laughs> well, why? Because they created a system where they can't afford them. How do we, how are Democrats going to fight this? I mean, it's, it's <coughs> you have to admit, mm -hmm. the other side has done very good with its messaging. If, if people like those that you're talking to are, are so... Um, just think Trump can do no wrong, or their Republican senator or congressman can do no wrong. They, they've, they've been persuaded effectively. Mm -hmm. and, and how are we going to get that progressive voice out there? How are we going to convince people to? Well, I would hope that it would still be a free press, um, and that's being under uh, that's much undermined. much diminished, <laughs> yes. Uh, but, I mean, there's some excellent reporting coming out of even there the Wall Street it. Journal New today. Who would have thought? Yeah. And uh, right. the Washington Post and in New York Times, uh, there's some good papers out there yet, not many, but there are some, and they are finding, they're, they've got some bulldog reporters who are trying to find out where the Russian money is being laundered, and we're finding it might go to the NRA, yeah, even. I know. Yeah. and uh, oh, it's man. being invested oh, in, in condos, <laughs> uh, and people like Rachel Maddow, so right. you've got some good people who I think are doing very good reporting, and hopefully if uh, people pay attention uh, to this news releases and do a little reading of Main Street news, they will learn something for a change, and it won't come just from politicians who are Democrat or Republican okay. pontificating on an issue. It'll come from somebody who, who hopefully has uh, some credibility in, in journalism. He's telling us we're running out of time. Is there no, any no, other? No, no, I'm just uh, looking at all the points that I had, like the <laughs> that we aren't going to get to. Yeah. Anything <laughs> the, else you want to bring up in terms of federal or national issues, or you? We only have a half a minute. Oh, okay. So well, who, we can't say much. We didn't right? solve the world again. <laughs> Next again. program. Right. But there are things that we'll uh, we, sh we should time. be uh, dealing with with uh, next program and you know the comments that uh, uh, the president said about the African countries in oh, Haiti which is a, con a country that's been very helpful to us or the dreamer and other things we should maybe spend time in the next program on those yes issues. Can, can we allow our children because to listen to the presidents <laughs> and I have to uh, thank Cal Potter and uh, Nanette uh, Bullybush for being emotionally involved in this program <laughs> Thank and until you. next week, this has been a legislative update. Thank you. <laughs>